So how's everyone doing today? Well, I, I thought we'd uh, I thought we'd start off today by having a few comments about how you're doing today, and I'll I'll start because I'm feeling pretty good today. All right, at last, eh? <laughs> uh, pretty unusual. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm so so. That's a, that's a good thing. Myself and Mary have been working through a lot of things and, and I feel like I'm coming out. To, if I'm not out the other side yet, I'm getting close now. So I'm feeling quite good about that. And uh, as a result of that, we've decided to change quite a lot of things uh, as well because I feel a bit more uh, probably, what would you say, a bit more that I need to take... Uh, responsibility for a few things with regard to how the divine love path gets presented and so forth. So, so I'll be talking about those things tomorrow actually at one o'clock uh, when we come along tomorrow we'll be talking about, I think I plan to talk with you about the law of desire tomorrow and uh, before I talk about the law of desire I've probably spent about an hour just talking about some of the plans that uh, we have in a practical way and I wanted to talk to the whole group about it because that way nobody gets their wires crossed about what my plans are and how I feel about them. But today, uh, what we're going to do is focus on a subject uh, about emotions again. But before we begin, would you, who would like to mention how they feel? Would anybody like to start? Um. If, if we get the mic down here, so, and then we'll go straight back to the dinner. So there's a mic, so there's a second mic somewhere. Where is that? Where's Karen gone? She... Oh, there she is. Sorry. You've got the mic, haven't you, up there? Uh, no worries. Okay, fire away. <laughs> you sure you want to say something? <laughs> no, okay. Put it back to Dennis and he will say something instead. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay to feel, feel the way you feel. So many people, by the way, when you get the mic in front of us, we get all different types of... That's fine, but you don't have to stay... You don't have to keep the mic there and talk. You can just give it away. That's fine. <laughs> Far away, mate. Hi, Jane. Um, I feel like a, I feel like having a good cry. Really, yeah, unworthy stuff. And yeah, yeah, it's been brewing up for a, for a while now. Yeah, a few triggers coming along. So, and when you notice the triggers coming along, you find you're getting into the sadness, or you're still sort of still a bit blocked around. Ah, uh, yeah, still a bit blocked. But I'm, I'm as I go along, I get more and more realizations where I am and yeah. why I'm doing it. But it seems a long process. But, yep. but hey, I'll just stick in there, eh? Yeah, that's right. Always stick in there. Yeah. Anyone else would like to mention anything? Let's, if we can go across maybe to Rick and then down. <coughs> down. I'll oh, start down here. Start down here. So with. Uh, um, two weeks ago you said to follow your desires and so that's what I've been doing over awesome. the last two How's weeks. that been going? Yeah, really good and I'm just feeling really good about life again so it's, it's a great feeling because I was just feeling sort of down in the dumps for the last couple of months but yeah. um, I decided on the spur of the moment um, maybe about five weeks ago now that I was going to study art um, so that's what I've been doing. I started two weeks ago so... I'm creating stuff now and um, yeah, I might have some someone to be able to busk with as well, so I'm going to get ah. into the singing a bit more. So, yeah. And I've put um, some videos on YouTube of me singing and so that's triggered me a little bit right. as well. Awesome. And, um, oh, also, um, I've just suddenly had like lyrics to songs, like just and the tunes to songs come to me and then so I've been creating a few songs as well, so... That's yeah, really good. everything's sort of happening. And really good. Um, Do you know, have you noticed like when you follow your desire, you start getting some joy back out of life? Yeah. The trouble, the trouble a lot on the divine love path is we get stuck in the emotion and then we forget to follow desire. Yep. And in the process of that, we get all down in the dumps and, and nothing really starts changing because tomorrow we'll talk about desire and how much desire affects the changes that happen in our life. So. Yeah, and that's what I was realising um, just before the last seminar, I was thinking, I'm focusing way too much on processing emotions and, and then in the other sort of time that I'm not processing, I'm not uh, following my desires because I was kind of feeling like that's too much of a natural path, yeah, <laughs> a yeah. natural love path thing yeah. to do to, to want things and to sort of, you know, 
have it in my mind. Oh, this is what I want and I'm going to go for that. But yeah. then I sort of, sort of thought, no, I need to do a bit of both. Yep. And um, so it's really working now and I've just That's had good. a few things that I've attracted today. And the emotions still cool. come up, don't they, still? Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. so they work hand in hand. So it's awesome. Good. That's very good. Yep. Rick, you want to... Yeah, g'day. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I sort of half processed an unwanted emotion and unloved by by mum and yeah. a bit by dad as well. Yeah. And I've noticed that that needy addiction of wanting to sleep with every woman just about the walks past has probably cut into about half. Awesome. <laughs> That's progress, Rick. Oh, it's awesome. It's yeah, so it it's such a relief. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. before then you would have had quite a lot of judgment about that emotion too, wouldn't you? Like a bit of shame about it. Yeah, a fair up. bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm sort of just embracing it now. If it comes up, I'm trying to think of how unwanted I still feel. Exactly. Spot on. Yeah. Very good. So, yeah, feeling pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and isn't it wonderful when you get start like having the bravery, really, in the end, the courage to deal with some of these emotions that we judge quite a lot, generally, and, and having the bravery to actually get into the emotion and get underneath, straight away you start realising, oh, this is actually working for me now. This, is going, this, this change is happening now. And that's very powerful because that gives you confidence to finish the process off with, the, with that emotion. Whereas a lot of times before we start, we get so down in the dumps about it. Oh, it's always there. And we, you know, go for a walk down the street again and it's still there. And you go for a walk down, down the beach, down at Malula Bar or whatever, and it's still there again. And before you, know, before you know it, you get so down on yourself about it. And the down on yourself, as we'll talk about a bit today, is actually a very distracting emotion and not actually very productive to your own emotional work. Yeah, I'm letting that go, actually. You don't really need to feel down on yourself at all. Just allow no. whatever's there and... Yep. And there'll be times when you will feel appropriate repentance, which has grief associated with it, but, but when you start getting into the causal, a lot of times you start realising, wow, this wasn't as dark as what I thought it was. Like, and, and a lot of our sexual-based emotions are actually not about sex at all. They're actually more to do about feeling unloved, unwanted by the opposite gender. And, and a lot of our projections at them are actually a result of those addictions being that we want to get fulfilled through sexual desire. So, yeah. For sure. Powerful. That's good. Anyone else want to share? We go out the back there. That's good. Yeah. Hi, AJ. How are you doing? Um, a bit shaky today. Yeah. Um, I've... Um been going through a lot of emotions over the last three weeks and yeah. been through some causes, but there's still more coming up. Um, particularly 30 years ago, I had a very serious motorcycle accident yep. and um, I did a lot of damage to my body, um, a lot of pain, a lot of terror. Yep. Um, apparently, um, when I was in hospital, I passed away on the, in the theatre and they brought me back, apparently. I yep. don't remember a thing. Yep. Um, all I fear around that is just sheer terror oh. and... I'm struggling with that yep. um, and anger for myself and I don't know how to deal with that either. Yep. Um, anger to, towards yourself, you mean? Yeah, I feel like it's huge anger. I think there's anger there towards God yep. um, that I had to go through all that and I feel like the, there's got to be anger for myself for putting my soul through that. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's more than fear, it's terror and I'm really frightened of it. Yep. And I know... That my soul, I feel like my soul really wants to go through it, but my mind or my body doesn't somewhere, and I'm. So there's a resistance to feeling your terror. Yeah, and I and I believe it's I have depression at the moment. And I think it's created that. Certainly. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to get on top of that as well. So there's all sorts of things going on. That's good. And um, one day's good, and one day's pretty bad. horrible. Yep. Yeah. Um, up and down all over the place and I just, oh, I don't know, <laughs> try and keep going I suppose. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, um, if we, today's discussion may help quite a lot in terms of uh, working through some of the things with regard to emotions and understanding. A lot of times terror is a result of our not understanding. And so if we can understand things, even in an intellectual way, a lot of times we can move through the terror as an emotion. So it's like, the terror may be an emotion that exists within us, but when we also have an intellectual understanding that backs up the terror itself, then obviously it's very, very difficult to even experience the emotion of terror. 
But when we start having intellectual understandings that are opposite to the terror itself, now we can start noticing ourselves working our way through those deeper emotions of terror. So we'll talk a little bit about that maybe today as well. Thanks, Andy. No worries. Um, that's Louisa down, down front here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit upset. We had a big sort of blow up in the car. We come with a few people. Yeah. Um, last night, I don't know, I just was at a dance event and felt um, this feeling, I've just got to speak my truth. <laughs> and, you know, I did. And, um, you know, the lady was pretty upset with me and casted some blame and stuff. Yeah. So did um, she, was she attacking towards you or uh, angry with you? Well, I was just saying there's just something I'm not happy about, you know, the way you're saying we have to dance with other people and I'm feeling, you know, some stuff about that. Yeah. And I have for about a year, but I just felt that I had to say it So last these night. are dance lessons that you go along to, are they? A creative dance, creative dance event, right. yeah. 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 And then today well, there was a big blob in the car with someone and... Um, and then the la another lady fell over <laughs> when she got out of the car. So, yeah. But I'm just feeling that I really need to speak my truth. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. can, you, can you feel how frightened you are about that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I haven't sometimes because I'll lose people's love. Or yeah. <laughs> I knew this lady wouldn't react well <laughs> last yeah. night. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just thought this morning, I'm just no one's going to want to be my friend anymore. Yeah, you speak the truth and you lose everyone. <laughs> yeah. 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 How many of you feel that way? Yeah, I think you've got a lot of friends here anyway <laughs> who feel the same way. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, what I, what I wanted to do today is talk about this subject. Um, emotions. So this is part of the series that I'm doing on, on the human soul. Emotions, truth, and action. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this subject is to show you the relationship between when we feel certain emotions and when we don't, what's happening with regard to the truth, and then what's happening with regard to our refusal generally to take action. Because most of the time what happens is that we are very afraid of acting. As you just pointed out, Louise, like what happens is that we're afraid of acting because of lots of different emotions within us that we probably will get triggered on if we act. And so what we want to do is see this relationship between what's happening with regard to our emotions, what's happening when we stay in truth, what's actually going on inside of the soul when we stay in truth, and then how acting can actually expose emotions and expose the, the true condition of our soul if we act. Now, many people avoid actions that actually will expose themselves emotionally in what they feel is a negative way. So, so for example, if I feel that a certain situation will cause me to feel anger inside of myself, all I finish up doing is just avoiding that situation in my life. So what I do is I stay away from those situations in my life so that I can avoid the underlying <laughs> truth of my emotional condition. So most of the time what we're doing is we're trying to avoid the truth of our underlying emotional condition and many of us are not understanding yet what effect that actually does have on our soul because it has a big effect on our soul and our soul's ability to experience emotions. So what I'd like to do firstly is just remind you of a few things regarding emotions. Let's just focus firstly on the issue of emotions. So here's our soul. So our soul is what things again? So it is our emotions, passions, desires, intentions and so forth, right? So there's our soul, what are the two influences on our soul primarily? All right, truth and error, okay. The problem with error when it enters our soul is that it feels like the truth. All right, so once it's in my soul, it feels like it's true even though it's error. So 
that's one of the major problems that we have with regard to our emotions. So when we experience an emotion, we have the fear, many of our emotions are error-based emotions, and where have they come from? They've come from our environment somewhere, haven't they? So let's, environment, we're right up there. So, and our environment obviously is primarily our upbringing, and therefore a lot to do with our parents or their caretakers of us while we were growing up as children. So that is the prime regenerator of all of this stuff that's inside of us that's now entered us emotionally. By the way, there are also things that have entered our soul that come through the truth channel, of course, that are a part of the truth regarding our soul and how we feel. And of course, those things don't feel painful within our soul. They actually feel pleasurable within our soul. But most of the time in our life, we've got a soul that's quite full of quite a lot of error-based emotions which generate, it generates the pain in our life. And the pain is telling us that we're in emotional error. So that's the basis of our emotional processing. But what I'd like to do now is just describe to you what actually physically happens inside of your soul with regard to these. So if you can imagine your soul like a great big ball of emotional energy for a moment. When a causal emotion hits you, and what I'll do is I'll use a few examples. So let's say you were young, you were maybe five years of age, and you, know, you started experimenting sexually with maybe you know, <coughs> next door neighbor's five-year-old child, and you were five years of age yourself, right? And the actual experimentation process had no emotional co connection with it in that particular moment. In other words, you, feel, you felt quite okay that it was happening. You didn't feel like a shame that it was happening or anything like that until somebody comes along and projects at you their shame. So now a causal emotion has entered you of sexual shame. So there it is somewhere in your soul. that I should be ashamed of myself sexually and it's right there in my soul. Then what starts to happen is we start getting a lot of blocking emotions. So this is what I would call is my causal emotion. That's the one that generates the rest of my life while it stays in my soul. So that's the one that influences now every sexual interaction that I have with anybody from that point on. Does that make sense? that causal emotion. That's what generates my law of attraction. So my law of attraction is actually surrounding that emotion. If I want to change my law of attraction with regard to things, then I need to change this emotion. That's the issue I've got within my own soul. But what happens is we often have these little blocking emotions that we use to suppress our awareness of this causal emotion. Now let's look at what might happen. Let's say the next door neighbour's mum and my mum, they got together and they decided this was not on. And they decided they were really angry and upset because of all their sexual shame issues and so forth. And so what they did is they got me and the little girl together and they just yelled at us, what are you doing, this is not right, and off they go. So now there's some things of like an angry, an angry adult who's three times my size, right, is now projecting all this rage at me Right, because of what I did. So how ashamed am I feeling now? Right, quite ashamed. But on top of that, now I have this thing that the adult is right. right? Or if we change the word adult to be mum, right? and you could say now that's a block for me to be experiencing my shame. Can you see that? So not only now do I have this shame inside of me, but now I have this belief that, that my mum, through her anger and rage and everything, is projected at me, and that's now also entered me, that my mother is right on this subject that I should be ashamed of that particular event. Right? And then, like, that night, Dad comes home. Right? Mum tells Dad, because Mum's still upset, right? She's not dealt with her sexual shame on the issue. Right? So she tells Dad. And then she tells Dad something like, and this happened for many of us in our childhood, you know, um, 
you need to belt them. You need to give them some kind of corporal punishment, right? So dad comes along. What does dad do? Dad gives us a smack, right? Because he's hooked into mum and her, all of her feelings of what a man should do and so forth. And he's hooked into the fact that the man should just throw some strength and whatever else. And so dad gives us a smack. Right? Here we now have another blocking thing placed on top of this of, of pain, physical pain. And we're terrified because there's a, like, there's a person three times bigger than ourselves now belting us. And what are we feeling? Like, this is totally, we, we have no control over what's happening now. We've got no, like, free will. We're not allowed to do anything. We're going to get punished. We're going to get lots of pain. And notice the pain is now associated with the sexual shame. Right? Just like mum in our age is being associated with the sexual shame. Can you see what's happening? We're, we're, we're now constructing this big labyrinth of blocking emotions to actually experiencing the sexual shame. And this could go on for quite some time. Every time I see the girl next door, her mother might look at me with anger and pull her into the house. What just happened again is another experience. I'm going to be like ostracised or criticised because of my past behaviour. If I, like, that just adds to my shame, of course, but now I've got another emotion sitting there. And can you see how here's our soul, here's all the emotions in our soul, and we've got this now labyrinth of, a, of capping or blocking emotions coming all from my childhood, so I'd call all those emotions my blocks, to experiencing that feeling, that sexual shame. All right. So everyone's following so far? Where we're at? Now, we're still young, we're still a child, and we could actually experience this sexual shame and release it quite easily, actually if our parents allowed that to occur. And in fact, if, if you think about it, if our parents would allow that to occur, then they probably would be in a place where they didn't have any sexual shame themselves, and therefore the emotion probably would never have got created in the first place in us, right? So a lot of these emotions all came from the fact that our environment hasn't healed its emotion about those events. Now imagine if what you did was actually wrong from everyone's perspective. So, or even wrong from your own perspective. So sometimes we finish up taking actions that we know are actually wrong and we don't even know why we've done them, but we know that they harm others and so forth. So imagine if this sexual shame that we had experienced also involved the fact that the little girl next door got really badly punished, much more worse than what I did. Imagine if that happened. Now there's so much like, I caused her pain. There's a whole group of emotions surrounding that. You can see how you could easily have 40 or 50 different emotions now surrounding this underlying emotion, which is the cause of your law of attraction. Now, obviously, we want to get to this emotion and release it as an adult. We want to make sure it's not there anymore. But how do we do that? You, can you see there's, there's all of these patterns all coming off, if you like, of all of these blocking chains, if you like, coming off of this emotion that have been defined through the rest of my life and all of my life's experiences. And this is where truth comes in. You see, if we add now to the process, not personal truth, but rather God's truth I'm talking about here, so... Truth is the thing that is going to help us access each one of those states emotionally. So that state there emotionally might be mum believe, anything that mum says is right. That might be one of my blocking emotions. Now is that a truth? Well, unless your mum's a one with God, it's not yet a truth. Now when she's a one with God, it will be a truth. Right? But up until that point, it's not a truth. Another truth might be, if dad's angry, I'm going to experience pain. Is that always the truth? Not always. My dad could be angry, but he could be angry with someone else and I won't feel pain. But, but it's a blocking emotion that helps, that's stopping me from getting down through this labyrinth. 
And the problem is, is if I don't face the truth of every one of those blocking emotions, I will never get to the truth of the experience of this shame. Does that make sense? And in fact, truth is the thing that opens everything up for you. Now, the reason why I bring that up is that many of you are still avoiding truth in your life, still avoiding the truth even of your own emotion in your life. We had a good chat uh, earlier. Um, is Sven, where's Sven? Do you mind me mentioning about the diesel thing? Is that all right? Um, Sven was talking to me earlier and he said that uh, he, was, he, he needed to fill up his car and uh, his car's a diesel, diesel car so, and there's only one diesel pump in Mullaney. So, so what he did was he manoeuvred his car to get the right side and everything else and just as he was about to pull in to get the car filled up in that pump, another guy, a young guy, just drove up and said and sat right on the pump right, and then filled up his car. Now that brought up an instant emotion inside of you, didn't it? Like an instant emotion of, initially, there was this anger that popped up inside of you. But then, but then what happens is, we don't want to experience the anger because we don't want to judge ourselves. We think, oh, anger, I'm not being spiritual, I'm not being loving, isn't this terrible? That, so I don't have this anger anymore. What I'm going to do instead is make out the anger doesn't exist, which is what Sven tried to do. So, so what he does is he pulls up his car in the other pump pulls out the pump, fills up his car, right? all acting at the time that there's no emotion between me and this man, you know, there's no anger in me. Anyway, he drives off and about seven or eight k's down the road, his car stops, blow, billowing smoke and everything else. <laughs> so you have an idea what probably happened, which was the fact that he filled it up with normal petrol instead of diesel. So in the result of the action, the denial of the actual emotion, it created a compounding effect which then also got triggered through emotionally. Does that make sense? And this will, you'll find this will happen over and over again. Every time you actually stay away from truth, you create another compounding effect. You actually add to the damage that's there rather than taking away from it. Now, the alternative would have been, all right, I had the emotion. The emotion of anger is telling me there's a lot of blockages to something else down. I don't need to worry about what's down, what's at the base of it. All I need to do is go and experience my anger in a loving manner. So how do I experience my anger in a loving manner? I go across maybe to my car, drive a bit down the road, bash the steering wheel, yell and scream and swear and carry on. That's how I experience it in a loving manner. I don't go up to the guy and bop him in the nose and say, I was here first. <laughs> right? That's an unloving manner, right? So what we do is we go out and we experience the emotion in a loving manner. That is the truth of that moment. Right? The truth of that moment is that I am angry and I need to experience the truth of that moment. The truth is I am angry. Experience the truth and what you finish up doing is releasing one of the blockages that gets you down to your underlying emotion. Does that make sense? If you choose to not experience the truth in that particular moment, what will happen instead is you often will add to the emotional damage that you have within your soul, but you certainly won't release it. Now, do you mind me carrying on with the story as to what happened for you, sir? So what happens for, for, for Sven is that, what, so there was this, there's this process where he realised you drive off and now this second event has happened. The second event being the car breaks down, obviously, with all this smoke and everything. The car limps back, you know, and so forth. So lots of trouble now. Now, what would you do if that was the case? What would you feel inside of yourself? Angry with whom? Well, yeah. This, so it's tempting you see anger with self. So before we... Anger with self is the next emotion that basically you felt, wasn't it, Sven? Now, the problem with anger with self is that it's a... It's the same as anger with anyone else in that it, it, it's still not a loving act to perform, but we need to feel it and there must be a reason why we're feeling it. So we need to feel this anger with self. But a lot of the times, anger with self is not even an emotion that's in here. It's an emotion that we use to avoid what's in here. All right? Now, many of us do this. Most of us, in fact, do this. 
We create this anger with self because we're too scared to be angry with someone else. <laughs> Can you say that? What happened when you were little when you were angry with someone else? You got a whack generally, right? If you were angry with mum, you know, you tried being five and answering mum back. How did that, how, how did that work out for you? <laughs> Not that good, right? And if you tried to do it with dad, right? might be totally different there. So, so what we finish up doing is we, we get in this state where anger with self is preferable to anger with someone else. Does that make sense? But the truth is that it isn't preferable. We, both, we need to experience both, but we need to do both in a loving manner. The problem with anger with self is we'll often start hitting ourselves and hurting ourselves and doing all sorts of things. Would you da do that with the other person? Would you go up to them and brunt them in the nose? Well, if you wouldn't, then why are you bumping yourself in the nose like for what you've just done? Can you see that it's just the same process? I'm just avoiding something that's deeper anyway. So the key is, again, we need to allow ourselves to experience the anger with self, but understand, hang on a sec, this is just me avoiding the anger with the other fella that I had. That's all it's helping me do. So let's go back to the anger with the other fella that wasn't felt, this bit of here, and feel that. So at that point, we could have allowed the anger with the other fella. Does that make sense? Go into the anger. It doesn't mean that we go and bop him in the nose. It means we need to own it and experience the emotion. And as we experience the emotion, because we're in the truth about that emotion, that I am angry and I know it, now some underlying emotion can flow out of me. But if I deny that I'm angry at all, then the underlying emotion is never going to flow out of me. Does that make sense? It is just going to stay as locked up as it's ever been. We have a mic up the back there. Thanks. Hey, I'm just wondering, um, what if you're continuously letting out your emotion, like not suppressing anger or upset, but it's like constantly, you know, like someone who's always getting angry, like, you know, day after day or week after week, or someone who's always um, crying, you know, like when something happens, oh, you know, and then crying because it, it does hurt, you know, that sort of thing. Yep. Let's look at what's really happening, though. If I'm experiencing this anger today, and then I'm experiencing it tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next week, and the next month, and the next year, and I get the same law of attraction events that actually show me that I'm getting the anger, all I'm doing now is I'm staying in this emotion. And that's not the same as experiencing it and releasing it. What that is, is a projection onto the external, the projection onto the environment that I had drawn up there. It could be to my parents or my children or anybody else. And all I'm doing is living in that state. So when I say own the emotion, I mean that you would actually, in private, express the emotion that you feel. Like in this case, let's say it's anger and rage. And I would allow myself to fully experience the anger and rage knowing that actually this is a denial of a deeper emotion. Okay. Right? Yeah. All anger is a denial of a deeper emotion. Now, if I grieving, if let's say the anger, if the, let's say the emotion is grief instead, yeah. am I grieving by myself or am I grieving with others? Well, a lot of times what happens is that we use grief as a tool to manipulate others, just as we use anger as a tool to manipulate others. So I've got to be very honest with myself. Am I angry because I just wanted to control this person or manipulate them? Or am I angry because I'm feeling some causal emotional anger based around what happened when I was little? Mm -hmm. I need to be honest with myself about that. But how can I be honest about that if I don't even let myself feel it? If I'm already in denial of it, how can I ever be honest about what it's about? Can you see the relationship there? So yeah. the, the key is to feel your emotion. So that's the first one, just feel it. If you feel it, now you're in truth that it exists in you. At this point, I now acknowledge I'm angry. I'm feeling my anger. I'm not intellectually acknowledging my, I'm angry, by the way. I'm feeling my anger. I'm punching a bag or kicking a bag or whatever, and certainly not a person or anything else. But I'm, I'm expressing my anger in, a, in the most loving way possible, which is to feel it and own it for myself. In that particular moment, I will then usually discover the truth of my anger. So the, the causal. 
emotion uh, or it the... might not be the causal emotion. It might be the truth might be, oh, I'm, you, I'm this angry because I just didn't get my own way. Okay. Or I'm angry because that person didn't give me love. Or I'm angry... Does that make sense? Mm, okay. and, yeah. and therefore, once you feel the truth of what's there, you can start now getting to what's underneath. But if you don't feel the emotion in its own truth right at that time, and you're in denial of the emotion at that time, what will happen is you'll never get below. You'll never get into this labyrinth that covers over the causal emotion for you. Mm -hmm. so, so many people, what, they, what they're doing is they're having their emotions, like it might be anger or whatever, or grief, but they're not in the truth of their emotion. They're not being honest about what it's really about. And so therefore, it's never going to get closer to any other causal emotion within me. And remember, it's the causal emotion that creates the law of attraction. Okay. So without that being released, nothing is going to change. So the secret to all emotion in the end is if nothing changed after I felt it, then you've got to be already quite suspicious of it yeah. as to what its purpose is. And you've got to dig a bit deeper. Okay. Into that emotionally. And um, like how do you actually release it? Like, because I've heard you say before, you know, oh, you've cried for months, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, how do you actually release it? Is it like through forgiveness or? The experience you know, of it is the release of it. The experience. Right. Now, yeah. now, if you're crying for months, you've got to, again, be very careful what's going on because there, you might be in a lot of denial of the truth of the matter. But, but. Um, it depends on how much emotion you have in you. Obviously, if you've had a relatively easy childhood, and none of us have really had an easy childhood that we believe we've had, but let's say we've had a relatively easy one. In other words, I haven't been tortured and abused and raped when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Then obviously I'm going to have less causal emotions to deal with than a person who has been tortured and abused and raped mm -hmm. as a child. Yeah. Does that make sense? And a person who's been abused and raped as a child is obviously going to cry for a lot longer about some subjects than a person who hasn't been. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right? So yeah. we need to just allow ourselves to not judge the amount of time either that we're in an emotion, but rather just allow ourselves to experience the emotion. You can experience the emotion without judging it, but still understanding that it may be due to your desire to control others or manipulate others, which is actually not the causal emotion. Okay. So remember when we're in this state of feeling the causal emotion, you will actually feel like a child experiencing that emotion without blame or anything else going out of you at that moment. You'll just feel the grief of that emotion being inside of you. And when you do that, you'll feel this whole energetic change even in your own body. Things will start shifting in your body. You'll feel the energy flow through your body. A lot of people feel it as heat, like they get very, very hot while they're feeling it and so forth. And the, and the reason why that is, is when we release causal emotion, the energy systems in our entire body and our spirit body all change as a result of the emotion being released. Sure. If that doesn't occur, then we need to be quite suspicious about the emotion we're experiencing. So if I'm just crying because you did something that I didn't like and I wanted you to do something different, then I'm not crying about a causal emotion. Right? All I want is to control you with my tears, probably. Okay. Right? And that's not a causal emotion, and that is not even any of these emotions. It's actually an emotion of self, what I'd call self-deception, which is a whole different subject mm -hmm. again. So mo a lot of our emotions are actually self-deceiving in nature, in that we use them to manufacture a condition to control other people or ourselves. And we're not okay. talking about any of those emotions today, basically. What I'm trying to focus on today is the blocking emotions that have been established upon, on top of... that all happened in your childhood, by the way, not as an adult. These all happened in your childhood. A lot of people would call them the belief systems, right? The beliefs that you have. They could be just the belief about mum, the belief about dad, the belief about emotion. They're all causing... they're all blockages to you experiencing this emotion. And um, is it always linked with your parents or could it come from outside sources no. like school? Yeah, like, I think from the age of four or started, something yeah. where you're usually going to school, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that kind of... because, yeah, I had a pretty good upbringing but it was school, you know, and dealing with other kids and teachers and that sort of thing that... Yep, can I just point out, though, yeah. that you have a block towards dealing with childhood emotion relating to your parents? <laughs> and you've just stated what it is. Okay. What, what is it? Uh, 
So I'd have to think about that. Well, you just said the words. <laughs> I had. Had. Uh, okay. <laughs> a pretty good. Pretty good upbringing. <laughs> good upbringing, right? This is one of the major blocking emotions. Uh, is that mum sitting right next to you? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can just imagine what this is doing <laughs> to you. <laughs> can, can you see that there's, an, there's automatically a, a strong reason for you to say that? And she says the same about hers. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, now we've got to stop judging our upbringing. We've just got to stop judging it. What we've got to do is start stating the truth about it. While mum and dad might have tried the best that they could try at the time, and while they, you know, might have done what they felt was right at the time, the majority of mums and dads on this planet have no understanding about causal emotion, no understanding about blocking emotion, no understanding about all of these things that they created in us, no understanding about free will. Many of them believe they love, but they've got no understanding about love because every time they yeah. tried to control us as a child, they broke the law of love. So there's, we've got to come face to face with the truth that actually, while my mum might feel that I had a pretty good upbringing, there were lots of emotions that were created in me as a result of the breaking of the laws of love. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And the key is to not judge them for that, but to feel what that created in you. Yeah, so for example, when you know, something happened at school and I got angry about that and I took it out on them, Yep. Which happened. Yeah. Um, was that their law of attraction? Even yes. Even though yes. that was my thing? That was their that law of attraction. At yep. So then if they punished you for that, can you see already they're punishing you for their own law of attraction? Mm. Straight away there's a so that's mm. that's an unloving thing to do. Okay. So so can you see that even though we often feel like, you know, mum and dad did well, um, and by the way, many of you feel that, and that's one of the reasons why you're not feeling many of your emotions. Um, is because we don't focus on the truth as God sees it with regard to it. So every time my parents broke the law of free will, they did not love me. From God's perspective, that is the truth. So Every time they manipulated or controlled me or did something to me to control my will, they were not loving to me. And I must categorise that because we'll talk about free will at another time, but as long as their own free will wasn't being harmed in the process. So in other words, if I harm your free will, sorry, if I, if I exercise my own free will and in the process of exercising my own free will harm yours, now I'm being unloving in the exercise of my free will. Now your parents did that to you many times. Right? And if I'm honest, you will see the times that that's happened many times. Now that straight away means that I had a pretty good upbringing is really just, I had a pretty good upbringing in comparison to other people. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's really what we're saying. Mm. But in comparison to how God would have liked you to be brought up, mm. how was it? Because that's in the end what the truth will be. The truth is how God would have brought you up if God was sitting here next to you and being your mum. Right. That's the truth of what we need to feel emotionally. Mm. Okay, thanks. And what did mum say? Oh. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> it's okay. She just mentioned some books. Yeah. <laughs> the key the key with uh, a lot of things is that as a parent we often want our child to work our work their way through emotions without blaming us. Right? And the truth is that it's going to be very difficult for our child to do that. Because in the end our, their environment, which by the way as a parent we created, is obviously been a large factor in their emotional process and, and, and emotion, their emotional growth and therefore in the emotional errors and blockages that are within them. So, so at some point we are actually as parents to blame for the choices that we made. From a true perspective we are the ones responsible for the creation of many of our children's damaged emotions. All right? And we need at some state state as a parent to acknowledge that. By the way, of course the same applies to myself and my own parents, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So in other words, my own parents at some point are going to need to, at some point in the future, if they want to be at one with God, they're going to need to acknowledge 
that they were the creator of many of my emotional injuries that I've had to release and many of my situations that are now within me that I'm trying to get rid of. When we tell ourselves that we had a good upbringing, it, that is one of the major blockages to experiencing emotion. Okay. Because what That's we're amazing. trying to do, and this is the dynamic that often happens, here's me as the child, right? Here's my mum, right? Often the person that we want love from is that person, right? Mm. We want love from mum. So our desire is to have love from mum. So, so what happens then, when I start feeling the truth as God sees it, mum starts feeling like that's an error. Mm -hmm. right? Now when mum feels that, what's she going to project back at you? Yeah, Don't do that, don't go yeah. there, don't... Can you see straight away? Yeah. Now, if I'm hooked into wanting love from mum and she's giving me disapproval, can you see straight away that I'm not going to want to face God's truth? Yeah. And this is one of the major blockages that we have on the planet to actually changing the next generation's emotions. Okay. Yep. So if, if, if you say that to yourself at any time, I had a pretty good upbringing, there's little point to even making that statement, right? Because all you're doing, number one, is comparing yourself with other people's upbringing. You're trying to make yourself better about some things that, that weren't so good when you were growing up. And there are emotions in you that are affecting your law of attraction that somebody created and it wasn't you. Mm -hmm. So it's who did if it wasn't you? Then yes, it can, be your, it can be people at school and so forth, but the highest likelihood in every case is that it's the family okay. environment. And um, at what point does it start becoming your law of attraction? Because you mentioned that, um, you know, the children... Your responsibility or your law of attraction? Yeah, well, things that happen to a child are the parent's law of attraction. Is, am I following? No, no. What the child does with the parent is the parent's law of attraction. Oh, okay. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so the child has a law of attraction too? Of its own, of course. Yeah. Any, any good emotions in the child or when I say loving based, love based or truth based emotions in the child or any error based emotions in the child create its law of attraction, yes. Mm -hmm. But where did those love based yeah. and error based emotions come from? The family. From the family yeah. environment before they even went to school, right? Yeah. Definitely. So therefore there has to be something going on with the parents mm -hmm. and that's where we need to start seeing the relationship. The truth is that your law of attraction begins the moment you start exercising free will, which is the moment you are conceived. But of course, the avalanche of emotion that's coming into you at that point is mostly from your parents. Your parents. Mother, yeah. And in particular, your mum during the first nine months of gestation. So, so obviously, there's going to, that's going to have a huge effect on your law of attraction that results after that. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's so powerful for a parent. If they can see what happened to their child, particularly when their child was young, but also as the child is now an adult, if they can see what happened to the child and happening to the child right now as their own law of attraction, mm -hmm. it goes a great deal to actually working their way through both the parents and the children's emotion. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. If we go across to Karen, thanks. Um, just coming back to the anger, um, for several months I've been aware because of the people around me that I must have anger in me and I'm trying very hard in all sorts of ways to access that um, and asking God to help me to want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I still have a very strong feeling that I can't get very far into it because I'm too afraid to feel it. So I don't know what else I can do to feel it fully. Yep. Well, let's first address the really want to issue. You said to me that you really want to deal with your anger. I'm asking God to help me really want to do it. Okay, yes, that's, and that's good. The, the, fact is, the fact is that you don't really want to, right? So what we need to do firstly is look at why we don't really want to. So what reasons do you feel you have? Because cause here, here's some anger. So here's the anger inside of me. Let's call it anger. Now, I've got layers on top of my anger. I don't want to feel the anger. What are some of these belief systems that I have about anger that prevent me from experiencing the anger? I think um, there's a few reasons that I can think of. Um, one is that 
if I'm angry, my mother will be even more sad. And one is that if I'm angry, I'll be like my dad and I don't want to be like him when he's angry. Okay, let's, let's write some of these down. I'm like my dad. All right, when I'm angry, he was angry. I, and you didn't like your dad when he was angry, did you? No, most people don't, right? All right, so, so I'm like my dad if I'm angry. That's a block, all right? What was the other one, the mum, the mum one? I'll make mum that, sad? Uh, yeah. Make mum sad? So that's another block to experiencing anger. Any others that you can call, recall off the top of your head? The other two main ones that you feel are there? Yeah, off the top of my head, no. Yeah, no worries. Now, what we're going to do, have to do is feel the emotion that I am like my dad. Does that make sense? So, yes, while you're in this angry, rageful state and, and experience, expressing it, you are your dad. And it, Admit that to the, admit the truth of that to yourself. When you admit the truth of that to yourself, you'll feel the emotion about that. And then you'll get into this, I'll make my mum sad. What's that about? What did you feel every time mum was sad? Um, well, she was always sad and I always had to try and make her happy. So. Okay. So can you feel this oppression that you felt? That you always had to cheer somebody up? How does that feel for you? Bloody awful. <laughs> it, it, it feels terrible, doesn't it? Having to always cheer somebody up. It feels like you're totally oppressed by that person when you always have to cheer them up. Allow yourself to feel that emotion. As you allow yourself to feel these capping emotions to the childhood rage, right, you'll actually find that quite a lot of them are related to the childhood rage in the process. So a lot of that will also get released. But in the end, you'll get to the point where you're just allowed to experience your anger without those belief systems controlling your anger. So rather than praying to God about wanting to experience the anger, my suggestion was to pray to God about how can I experience that I'm like my dad? How can I experience that I'm like, that, that I, you know, that I'll make my mother sad? Talk about that with God. Does that make sense, Karen? Because a lot of times what we're trying to do is we're trying to talk to, with God about this issue here, the, what we believe is the problem, but in reality we've got all of these blocking things that are blocking us from experiencing that. And if I start addressing these with God, then I'll get to that in the end. So a lot of times we've got these layer of blockages and what we're trying to do is go around them to get to the emotion. So, so you're, at the moment, you're trying to go around the fact that you're like your dad and there's a belief in you that you are your dad when you're angry, right? You're trying to go around the fact that you're really upset with mum and feel really oppressed by your mother because of her being sad and you having to cheer her up all the time and you're trying to go around that. Does that make sense? So I don't want to feel that, I don't want to feel that, but these are the things that are stopping you from feeling that. And can you see that while they're there, this is going to be very hard to experience? Very difficult to experience. So many of us are trying to go straight to the thing that we know is our causal emotion, but we want to stay in denial of the blockages to that emotion. Right? And while we stay in denial, emotional denial of the blockages to that emotion, we will not ever get to the emotion itself. And on top of that, we will never release these blockages. Now, God... God wants us to go through this process so that we discover that we want to discover every one of these blockages to ourselves. Right? That's how God constructed this entire system, why God constructed this entire system the way she did. So that you go through a process of discovery, of self-discovery. Does that help? Hi AJ, this is really resonating very strongly with me and it's to do with some stuff that I dealt with on Thursday. So um, if you would have asked me eight months ago before I met you, yeah. I would have said I'd had a pretty good childhood <laughs> and I also would have said that I don't do anger because anger's not good, <laughs> it's not nice. And what I've recognised is that that has come from, my father was quite an angry man not um, physically angry, but verbally abusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so I guess I learned how not to do that. And 
Over the last probably week, I could feel this emotion coming up within me, you know, and I knew it was a really big one and there were lots of blocks to it and I could feel in my body, my body was telling me. And I, so I just kept praying to God about those blocks. And then on th Thursday, I managed to get into the emotion and this whole anger thing, you know, really, oh, my God. <laughs> and I, I'd actually... It often comes up when I sit in the sauna because the, the heat, you know, and so I got out and I started bashing the chair with this towel and, and then I, I lay on the bed that was down there and I started actually hitting myself, doing that very unloving thing yeah. to myself yeah. and, the whole, and I just couldn't access it. Mm -hmm. And I, so I just kept praying to God, you know, like it's I just helped me to get through these blocks and these... The, the resistance, like I knew there, <laughs> there was lots of resistance there. Mm -hmm. And where it took me <laughs> was to emotions of abandonment and um, betrayal. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And it was really... But that whole process of getting through the anger and, and uh, learning to be loving to myself was really, really very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of it, there's always this sense of peace that yeah. comes over and then I'm totally exhausted after it for the next yeah. day or two. But yeah. it's um, allowing myself to connect to that anger has been one of the biggest challenges for me and I know it still is with a lot of stuff that I have to go through. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it helps. Yeah, it's, I agree with you. Allowing yourself to connect anger is very, very difficult, particularly if you've suppressed it so much all your, your life, which most of us have been taught to do. And if we're women, a woman, generally we've been taught to do it even more than a man because a lot of times the fathers were a bit more expressive with their anger than our mothers. And so we often have some very strong hooks into that as well. But it, anger is only a masculine thing to do feminine thing, you know, we don't do that. And this is where a lot of women learn manipulative forms of anger demonstration, passive aggressiveness, depression. This is why depression is very more, much more prevalent in women than men because, because the anger is suppressed even further for many women. So it is something that does need to ex be experienced. The key, the key with anger is like what you did, basically go into, into the anger and rage, express it. But when you get into this state where you're expressing it towards yourself, take notice of that because that is actually just you doing the same as what your parents did to you. Well, then I started getting really angry with God. <laughs> and that's yeah. fine. God, is, God can handle it, right? Yeah. So God can handle it. Many of you have large amounts of rage with God. So allow yourself to express that. Of course, you're not going to be able to help hurt him physically very much with it, but that's the way it goes. But you need to allow yourself to experience that anger and rage and a lot of times you'll get down underneath. The key with all anger in the end is that it is a method of feeling powerful so that we can avoid powerlessness. So it's a method of controlling our grief in the end. So there's always usually childhood grief or shame underneath our rage. And the key is to allow yourselves to get to that point where we're experiencing that childhood grief, which is what you did. You stepped down under the anger and eventually got to the cause of why you're angry. The reason why we're angry is because we're so afraid about dealing with this particular cause of grief. And once we get into that, once we get through our anger, then we start usually getting into that causal emotional grief. So is anger often a block to almost all of those causal emotions? Anger is a large block. It, it, sometimes we've constructed our own anger and other times other people have. The, the, the key obviously is to look at whether it is a childhood type of rage or whether it's an adult form of rage. Now, you can tell the difference quite easily. Uh, one is when you're in a childhood rage, you're actually expressing your rage without really thinking about it very much or without trying to control it very much. And if you're doing it in a manner, you know, where nobody else is around, in other words, you're really owning it, you'll just experience the rage as rage. You won't necessarily feel it directed at a certain person. Does that make sense? I, often as an adult, though, what we do, um, and we do this out of denial of causal emotion and denial of blocking emotion, as an adult, what we do with our rage is we get into a rage, but it's always usually directed at a specific individual in our adult life most of the time. 
So that's a good indication that we're way away away from the actual causal emotion in that state most of the time and we need to allow ourselves to get back into this place where we're really owning it and feeling it for ourselves. Most anger is the creation of huge amounts of grief within us that we don't want to feel or large expectations which create addictions that we get confronted with. So if I am addicted to feeling good from you and you don't make me feel good in interaction, I'll be angry with you. But you could actually, if I wasn't addicted to feeling good from you, you could come up and call me all the names under the sun and I'm still not going to get angry with you. Does that make sense? It just depends on my addiction that oftentimes leads me into anger. So the anger is actually an avoidance in many cases of my own addiction, which could be something totally unrelated to anger altogether. Yeah. And the key Thanks. is for us to allow ourselves to discover it by firstly noticing and feeling I'm angry. Notice and feel you're angry. Then as you notice and feel you're angry, you can ask, well, what are you angry about? But if you can't feel what you're angry about, then how are you ever going to get deeper than the anger? It's just, it, and, and often many of us, by the way, have been on the spiritual path in the past. Many of us are in this state of total and complete denial of our own rage. Right? I've had many people come up and all you feel is a barrage of rage from them and they smile at you and talk about something that's totally unrelated to any emotion that's within them and all you can feel from it is terrible barrage of rage. And yet they themselves believe themselves to be in a perfectly calm, happy state. So now, When that started, you know, I really had no idea where it was going to lead me. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. So. and one of our blocks is often that we want to know where it's going to lead us before we feel the emotion. So even dealing with that is dealing with the blockage. Yeah. If we go right up the back... Uh, And then down to Barbara next. Hi, AJ. Um, I've got a bit of fear going on at the moment. Yep. But um, so I was working through some anger on uh, the other day. And as I started getting into it, um, I thought I was directing it at my mother. And then a spirit popped up. Yep. And... Um, <laughs> And as I was projecting my rage at it for controlling me and being with me for such a long time, yeah. it started taunting me, like laughing that Taunt it taunting you yeah. had that yeah. over me. Yeah. And and I just wanted to give up. Like I didn't want to give up, but I was. I didn't feel as though I was getting. It wasn't allowing me to get into that space, but I don't know if that was my uh, wanting to avoid that or not. Yeah, let's look, at, let's look at the situation. So you were feeling anger. Initially you thought it was with your mum, but along comes a spirit attraction. Man or woman spirit? Uh, man, male. Male, okay, so male spirit. I think now that's, <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure it was a male, it's changing now. But what, what's the feeling now? Uh, no, it's a male. Yeah, I, I feel it was a female actually, but anyway, I'll go with my original <laughs> There's a, I think there's a couple there. Yeah. Um, I feel, see, a lot of times the spirit will misrepresent themselves because of what hook emotionally you have with them as well. So they can misrepresent their gender just as much as they can misrepresent their appearance or any other th state that they have. So there are many spirits that come to us who are all nice and lovey-dovey, but as soon as we do something wrong, in their eyes, they get all angry and upset with us, right? So that oftentimes the spirit will also misrepresent their appearance. So they'll make out that they're our dad when in reality they weren't our dad. And because we had a connection with our dad who's passed, they use that connection in order to manipulate us. So the key is to trust your emotions. And the reason why I asked you whether it was a male or female was the feeling I had from you actually was that it was a female. Well, I, I had... Um because I've been going through addictions as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And what came up for me was my sugar addiction. Mm -hmm. And I had, that was a female energy. Yeah. But then when I started getting really angry and started, uh, that felt like a male energy. You were getting me. angry with mum, right? Yeah. Right. 
So can you see that that's going to attract two types of spirits? So let's look at the types of spirits it's going to attract. What, what do you think it's going to attract? And by the way, it might not be just two. It might be attracting lots of different types. But in your case, what type of spirit is it going to attract? I'm angry as mum. So I'm going to attract in that state all the mums who are angry with their daughters who are around me are going to be attracted to me. All the dads who feel their daughters should not be angry with their mum are going to be attracted to me. All the women who are angry with their mums are going to be attracted to me. And all of the men who are angry with their mums are going to be attracted to me. That's a lot of attractions going on now, right? Now, now what's my anger with my mum? I, I need to feel it because it's there, right? It's present. What is my anger with my mum? It's created by my denial of a fear that I have. And that's created by the denial of some grief or shame that I have. Right? Some causal type emotion inside of me. So when I'm angry with my mum, am I experiencing a causal emotion? No. No. Unless it's experiencing like a child. In other words, unless I'm just sitting on the ground kicking and screaming and throwing a tantrum just like a child would, I'm not experiencing a causal emotion of anger. So every time I'm not experiencing a causal emotion of anger, I am actually in an adult emotion of anger. And an adult emotion of anger is always the creation, my creation, so that I can avoid the fear or whatever is underneath. Now while I'm in this state, these spirits, depending on who they are, um, will just laugh at me in most cases. Because they know nothing's changing. They know you're not going to change. They know that, they, that you're very heavily able to be manipulated in this state. And they just think it's a great laugh, many of them. So can you see that's why we attract? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the other thing is um, I've been very much in my head. Mm -hmm. Like ever since then, I've gone from feeling to be able to feel certain things. And um, just the last couple of days, I've just been in my head. Why? So it hasn't, I don't feel as though I've been able to drop into my feelings until today. Yep. And then I've had some fear. Right, in. yeah. It's been your fear actually that's been dominating you since that point. Your fear of spirit's manipulation. When you think about it, one of the reasons why you were angry with your mum is why? Because she allowed that, like that exposed me to... To manipulation from others. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see there's a linkage even with what's going on there? I'm trying not to intellectualise it, to, like as soon as yeah, you're no, that's saying fine. that. And I'm yeah, that's fine. The, the thing is that you're now getting into the fear, which is, this, which is where you need to go yeah. and allow yourself to experience the fear rather than the anger so much. You do need to feel the anger so, and experience the anger, but understand when you're in this state, you are choosing, in many, if it's adult anger, you are choosing to get out of your deeper emotions. Still need to feel them. Yeah. But you need to understand in that feeling of them what you are trying to avoid. So with the fear, like today I was feeling fear being with Michael and Simon. But yeah. They probably don't know. So, <laughs> so know you were fearful of being with two guys? Yeah. So there's two fellows who are just talking to you or whatever? and you're afraid of them. But I can't get that. Like, so all you need to do is now feel, is feel this fear. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to work out what it's about, yeah. but you know it's got to be something to do with males. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's two men, right? Well, I think, yeah. 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 So you know it's going to be something to do with males. So yeah. allow yourself just to feel this fear now. Feel the terror of, and, and stay in the transaction with them. Stay in the, whatever, you, you know, the interaction, but feel the terror of it yeah. for you. Okay. So what are you afraid of? If you're just off the top of your head, what are you afraid of these two men for? Uh, maybe like feeling overpowered, like, domi like dominant, like yeah. them, them dominating me or yep. like them intruding and controlling, controlling me. What do you feel they, what do you feel they feel towards, you know, 
some spirits who don't want to talk about this very much. What do you feel they feel about women? Uh, they want to help. Is that right? I don't know. What, they hate women? <laughs> what do you feel is their underlying emotion about women? Why would you be afraid? If they really wanted to help you, why would you be afraid? Because of their intention. So um, are their intentions helpful? Well, yeah, they're my, like, I consider them friends, don't ah, I? <laughs> There's a lot of denial of truth going on. What are their true emotions towards women generally? The guys, you know this, so you know that it's like quite a lot of anger there towards women, isn't there? And quite a lot of neediness for women's approval and acceptance that often gets triggered and then into anger. Yeah. And both of you want to help women a bit, but in the end, finish up with a lot of angry women around you. Isn't that the case? So um, am I the really angry woman? <laughs> no, no. Their projection at you is the feeling that you're actually having, and that is that they want something from you in return for helping you. Yeah. And you're feeling that, and you're feeling control. You know, you're feeling controlled by that, and you have a fear-based response to that, obviously. Right? So let yourself feel the fear. If you let yourself feel the fear completely, you would have actually, you will actually get to what you're afraid of with the guys. Okay. But the intellect kicks in and says, "But they're my friends." Yeah. That. Uh, yeah. Just like the intellect kicks in and says, "But she's my mother," mm. or "But she's, he's my dad," or. But, you know, mm. and, and as soon as the intellect kicks in, we often don't allow ourselves to feel, I'm actually afraid of these two men. Mm. Yeah. And let myself feel that completely. Let myself really feel that. Let yourself shake and get really afraid. Yeah, because I could feel that. I yeah. wanted to kind of go into it a little bit more yeah. when I was talking about it. Yeah. Let yourself feel the fear, fear that you feel about these men. What, what's the fear? And you'll get down to some issues about being controlled probably by men's projections. Mm. Yeah. Thank but, you so much. But allow yourself to feel that. But your anger, by the way, with mum, um, the, that, that is not related to the fear you're currently feeling. Yeah, right. Okay. So you started getting angry with mum a few days ago, but what did you do with the anger? Can't remember. <laughs> but I've, yeah, I've been very angry with spirits a lot. Like, that, that's okay. the biggest thing. Like, I've just been really angry with spirits. With spirits. What happened, remember? You got angry with mum and that attracted us some spirits around you that you then felt, you said, controlled and manipulated by. So they're just going to stay there until I deal with the fear. You need to feel control and manipulated. Okay. Feel the, the feelings of being controlled and manipulated by spirits in this case because that's what you attracted. Yeah. Let, let yourself feel what's there. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. it's there. Kind of. So let yourself feel that. Yeah. So there was a reason why you didn't want to let yourself feel that with the spirits. And instead you got angry with the spirits as well. Mm. So why did you want to get angry with the spirits when you had a beautiful, like, law of attraction event where you felt controlled and manipulated by spirits and you could have gone into grief about it? Yeah. There must be a fear yeah. associated with spirits that you're yeah. responding to there. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, what, so what happened was that if you go through the law of attraction for yourself, you were angry with your mum, which is caused by the fact that you don't want to feel some sadness or grief or whatever with your mum. Then the spirits come along and taunted you. You then got, you know, instead of feeling controlled and manipulated by these spirits, you got angry with the spirits. Can you see a pattern developing? Yeah. Yeah. So what's the pattern? I'm just getting angry. I'm avoiding. You're getting angry <laughs> rather than feeling what you're afraid of. That's the pattern. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what are you afraid of when these spirits come along? You're afraid of them controlling and manipulating you. So let yourself feel controlled and manipulated rather than getting angry with them. Does that make sense? Let yourself go into the causal emotion, the deeper yeah. emotion, or even the fear at least, rather than projecting the rage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Um, we come down the front here. This, there's, no, there's a mic come the other direction. No, sorry. So, you, sorry, I was talking to. This is. I don't even know how to articulate, so I'm just going to plunge in here. Yeah. 
Um, I'm feeling all kinds of things uh, that are rising for me, and uh, certainly anger is something I don't generally let myself feel. So yeah. I, I can feel I'm, lots of, I'm, get, I'm out of breath, I'm feeling overloaded here, and I'm certainly aware that the, the, the big underlying fear is being judged by everybody in this room. Yep. Uh, being ostracized by everybody in this room. Yep. Um, so I'll make sure that happens after you finish. Okay. Um, <laughs> 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 so um, for me, a huge, huge lifetime issue has been my inability to hear. I'm wearing hearing aids right now. Yep. Yep. And so in order for me to hear you I am, and to understand you easily, I sm put myself right smack in the front row yep. so I can see your lips. See, yep. Now, I've got my hearing aids tuned up on the highest level at the highest program. So not only am I hearing you, every single time the door opens and closes, it's like, it's like rifle shots going yeah. off. Yeah. Over my life, I have come to the conclusion that my telling people that I'm having a problem has yielded no results. Yep. So there's not much point. So I, I try to do the Byron Katie thing and love what is. Yeah. But I'm coming aware. <laughs> I really am not. I'm quite irritated. <laughs> Hold on. This is good. This is good. Keep going with this. Okay. So, uh, and as I'm watching this, I'm going, yeah, and I totally feel I have no right whatsoever to express my irritation. Yeah. And that's a huge, huge block yeah. for me. Yeah. And I'm really forging in here with something that's truly unfamiliar to just say that's what I'm feeling. And I don't quite know where to go. I, you know, <laughs> the other part is I, I'm the fear, uh, if I do express my emotions, uh, well, one thing I know that irritation has not, anger has never gotten me any results. Yep. So I've just thought, why bother? So you give up on anger. I've given up on anger. Yep. So I just carried it around. Yep. You know, and so. uh, so here I am. I'm just saying, here I am. I don't know what to do next. Can we explain what's going on? Please do. Okay. Yeah. Firstly, anything that's going on in my body is a direct reflection of what my soul wants or does not want. Does that make sense? So if I don't want to hear, my hearing will become distorted or some, I'll have even some injury to my hearing to get to the point where I won't hear. So let's start with that. Firstly, I, you think you want to hear, right? But you need, you, I don't want to hear. So my body, my, through my law of attraction, my body is telling me that I don't want to hear. So the next question then becomes why? Right? Why don't I want to hear? It's always going to be something related to something that's going on in your childhood. All right? Generally, something that's happened throughout your life, sometimes. But most of the time, what's going on in your childhood. So can you remember your childhood very well? Not well. Not well. Not no, well. No. No. But I was uh, told, uh, they found out I was deaf when I was five years old. Yes. So, yeah. so obviously yeah. a very young age this, this occurred. Mm -hmm. So um, now, if it happens at such a young age, deafness happens at such an age, were you completely deaf at that age? No, I'm not completely deaf, but just very difficult to hear. Yeah. And it's been the same since that age? It's, it's stayed exactly the same. Okay, yeah. so it hasn't gotten worse over time? No. But rather it stayed the same. All right. So this is related to something your parents have going on. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Something related to hearing <laughs> that your parents have playing out that you've taken on and therefore mm. can't heal yourself as mm. a result of this emotion that's now in you as well. But let's start with the I don't want to hear. Instead of saying, mm. instead of saying I want to hear and I'm getting frustrated, say I don't want to hear. But there's also this other aspect of when other people, when you can't hear other people or other people do things that disturb your hearing, then you get angry. So there's anger there, right? and annoyance and frustration and all the same emotion really in the end it's anger. So I feel annoyed when other people don't speak up for me. Right? Now that, that is actually a projection on the other person. Do they have to speak up for you? Well they 
<laughs> I'd given up on asking. You know, okay, I just, yeah. but, but yeah. this is where the underlying anger is, you see. It, yeah, so, yeah. So there is a feeling and an expectation that they should. And then you gave yeah. up on that. Yeah, I wish they would. I feel like I can't expect people to do that, you know. You're, it, yeah. you're allowed to be honest about yeah. your yeah. emotions. <laughs> <laughs> you well, I feel like I don't have a right to ask people to speak up. Well, that might yeah. be true, yeah. but the truth is that you still expect it. Can it you would, see the difference yeah. of what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, I hear, I, I hear the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, a lot of times what happens is that we... we in this anger place, what we finish up doing is we don't want to say the truth to ourselves about how it really is running, right? So what we do instead is we, we couch it in a different term so that it sounds better to everybody, including ourselves. And in particular, we are mostly concerned about how it sounds to ourselves because it's all about our own definition of ourselves. So you don't want to say to me, I get angry when people don't speak up. But that is the truth, isn't it? Yeah. You do get frustrated yeah. and angry when people don't speak up. So be, own it. We need to own mm. it. Why do you feel angry when you, people don't speak up? There's a reason. And see, if you don't own the anger itself, how will you ever find the reason? Can you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let's own the anger. The anger is, yes, I get angry and frustrated. People are bashing on the door. Kids are running in and out there. All I'm hearing is all this other stuff. It's so distracting. And, you know, sometimes AJ speaks too quietly and I don't hear that part either. And then he doesn't face me and he's over here, someone I can't lip read him either. And it's just so annoying, right? In the end, you feel like very frustrated about all that. Let yourself feel the frustration of all of that. Because underneath the frustration of all of that is what is the emotion you need to heal. And if you don't feel the frustration, the anger of all of that, you'll never get to the emotion you need to heal. So let's look at the emotion that might be under it. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. All right. So what happens when you don't hear? What do you feel? I feel excluded. Right. Excluded? I feel like I don't belong. I'm not a participant. I feel silly. Missing out? Missing out. I feel judged. Judged? What happens when everyone else hears what to do for lunch and you don't hear? I feel stupid. Yeah. I feel like, what's wrong with me? You know, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so what I would like you to do is to make a list of all the things that you're afraid of if you don't hear. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All the things that you're afraid of that if you don't hear, what might happen? Because all of those things are related to your causal emotion, which is actually your mum and dad's causal emotion, actually. You, and you, what's happened is due to their, their emotions that are, now, that are now inside of you and been carrying for many years, because of these emotions, what's happening now is that you're rejecting the hearing from, being, from recovering. There's an emotion in you that stops you from the hearing repairing itself. Your body is like a completely beautiful system that is co totally capable of repairing itself completely. Which in me, it also means that your hearing is totally capable of recovering and being healed completely. Right? When it happens to you, you'll think, oh, it's a miracle, but actually it's not a miracle. Your soul is able to completely govern what's going on with your body. Which means your soul is creating the, the hearing issue. Now, the fact that it happened when you were five means that there has to be a lot of parent stuff in it. Does that make sense? A lot of parent stuff. So what would happen when, when you were little? How did you feel before the age of five and, and as you were diagnosed as having this hearing problem? Did they feel that it was happening all your life, including before you were five? I don't know. It was just discovered. It then, was discovered In, in school testing. Yeah. And then I just toughed it out for years, you know, I just sat in the front row and did what I could do. Yeah. 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 Until eventually I got hearing aids. And yeah. and can you see how the emotion of being stupid would be part of that? Yeah. With regard oh, to being yeah. at school, yeah. not being able to learn like everyone else can because you can't hear mm -hmm. what's being said and so everything feels confusing. Now these are the emotions you need to allow yourself to feel through. If you can feel your way through those emotions, you will actually get quite, quite easily to the reason why the hearing is impaired in the first place. 
And when you do that and release that emotion, then the hearing will recover completely. And this is very different than if you have a progressive hearing problem, right? Because mm. that, that's a different type of problem that's usually caused by a lot of childhood choices that you've personally made. This one, because it was something that happened, pro and I suspect you've been in this state all of your life, probably from mm. your birth onwards, and um, I feel is related to your parents' emotions. Oh, I do too. And so, so the key is to look at your parents about how they feel excluded, how they feel missing out, how they feel being judged, and how, like, look, I know they've passed now, but mm. let yourself feel um, those emotions related to their, to their life. And you'll, I think you'll find there's quite a lot of your emotions in this hearing issue related to their life and what they felt about their life. Can I ask you this? It's been pointed out to me as well that uh, certainly I want other people to speak up, but then someone said to me, so where in your life don't you speak up? And so I'm wondering, does that play a role? Mm. Yeah, well, my answer to that question would be mm. that's a big theory, yeah. <laughs> but that's not your feelings. You see, to me, your mm. feelings are the answer to every problem, not, not any theory. So, mm -hmm. so, and I notice this happening a lot. Like, like a lot of people come up to me and say, oh, such and such was angry with me last week. Does that mean I have anger within me? Well, no, that's a very new age concept, but I don't mm -hmm. agree that, it has, that you have anger in you. What are your feeling when somebody projects their anger at you? What do you feel? Because whatever you feel in that moment is the emotion that needs to be released. So what mm -hmm. I'm saying to you is that when you can't hear, what do you feel? Because it's that, those feelings that's creating you, not hearing. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Not any other mm -hmm. idea that somebody might present at you as to why. Well, one of the results is that I truly don't speak up when I often really could because I think I'm going to say the wrong thing. Yeah, so yeah. I feel yeah. that's more an effect and not yes, the cause. Yeah. Does okay. that make sense? Yes, that does. That's an effect of your, of your hearing impairment, but it's not the cause of it. The cause of it is related to your emotions of when you can't hear. Mm -hmm. Not, yeah. the emo not, not the results of you not hearing and then what you do as that action mm -hmm. upon that. Does that yeah, I, I get that. Yes, yeah. thanks. So, so, and by the way, this is a general principle that most of us can take with us from it as well, is that many times we come up with some kind of new age sort of intellectual, mm -hmm. you know, philosophical argument as to what the result may be, but we are trying to avoid our emotion right at that moment. And it's the emotion that dictates and is dictating to us at that moment what is actually the reason for why I've got what I've got. So, so start with your anger and then go down into your fear. And these really are expressing your fears. And under each one of those fears is a grief. And the key is to feel that grief. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Let yourself feel the grief of what you're afraid of rather than staying in the place of anger. And you can f even just f me saying that it's grief. Straight away you can feel, straight away you're connecting to some. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And see, a lot of times what we finish up doing is we finish up telling ourselves, oh, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that, it's something else, it must be something else, I hope it's something else, <laughs> right? And in the end, the thing that's the most obvious is probably the, most, the thing that it is. And if you allow yourself to feel some of these emotions, and this is why I say, let yourself, when you're in this state of not hearing, write down all the things that you're afraid of by not hearing. Let yourself feel that you're going to miss out, that you're going to be judged, and going to be feel like everyone's going to think you're stupid, because these are all events that have happened in your childhood related to this, but are also related to the causal emotion as to cre that creates the lack of hearing. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. No uh, let's go across here first. Eh? I haven't got to actions yet. So. AJ, I know that as a, a child I had a lot of anger and rage towards my mother. Mm -hmm. And I can remember there was a pattern that I used to do and sometimes I used to get my sister's coat and go and lay in front of the fire and I'd pull down my nails until they bled. Mm -hmm. 
And my mother was never in the room. Yeah. But what I wanted most of all was for her to just know <laughs> that I was feeling... Really bad. Really bad. Yep. And I can remember one day she did come in and just stood at the door and, and I just could not share with her what was going on because in a way I didn't really know what was going on. That's not the reason why you didn't share it with her. Can you feel again about the reason why you didn't share with her? Because I didn't think she'd be there for me. Because you felt she wouldn't be interested. Can you see that? And that's the causal emotion of your anger, actually. You see, it's like your mother obviously had a quite a group of emotions that allowed her child, that needed her child actually to be angry with her. You follow me? And if you think about some of those emotions, they are things like, you know, mum obviously had some, a lot of fear in her, right? Mm. So fear, a fear of rage in mum is going to create rage in the child to, to actually project at her. But your mum in that process of fear never really demonstrated very much personal interest in you. Right? And many of your actions, including the action of anger and rage, was create, were created in you so that you had some interest shown in you. So one of the causal emotional reasons why we get angry often is because we feel deeply unloved and we need to project anger at the person that we're feeling our love from so that they notice we're around at least and they'll give us some attention at least. Does that make sense? Mm. In your case, uh, your mum wasn't very emotionally connected to herself, so therefore impossible for her to really connect with you and you felt that all the time. And that's the emotion you need to feel. And you know it's there, <laughs> right there. Mm. I can remember, I don't know how old I was, but there was one day in my bedroom and I'd closed my door and I got hold of a soft doll and I just thrashed her around the room. And I can remember breaking down and just crying and I didn't understand what Why? any of this was about. Yeah, and you'll probably need to go through similar sort of experience in order to understand what it is about. But it, but at the causal level, it's about how mum never really showed any interest in you and therefore you felt very unloved by her. And one of the primary causes of your anger was the fact that she had no real demonstration of love towards you. Yeah. T totally disinterested, actually. Yeah. yeah uh, and not, and has, is she, has she passed? Yes. Yeah, she's not very happy with me saying it either. It's okay. It's like, just let's bring it on because I want to yeah. clear this. Yeah. So, AJ, can I go back a bit? In, in utero, I have had the um, feeling or memory of she wasn't even there for me in utero. No, in fact, most, many mothers are not. Many mothers are totally upset when they get pregnant and uh, and feel like that's going to control the rest of their life and they don't know what to do with the child. Many of them have not been educated about how to even bring up a child so they don't want the child. And lots of rejection occurs. She'd had two previous miscarriages and so on. So And she wasn't there for me at the birth. She was out to it. My father was the first one to engage with me. Mm -hmm. And then he employed a nurse to come and live at the house for two months. Mm -hmm. I bonded with the nurse. Mm -hmm. And then got her taken away from you. Yeah. So there's this whole scenario that plays out. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and I think I internalise and turn things on myself a lot. What you've been doing is blaming yourself. Yeah. Right, and this is very, this is very common to do. You've been blaming yourself for their emotional injuries. And one of the things you're going to need to start doing is actually allocating the, if we can call it blame, or the responsibility, I'd prefer to call it, the responsibility for those injuries. Yes, Mum. Um, just um, we Allocate the responsibility for the injuries as to where it belongs. Now, now yes, your mum had quite a lot of emotions even before you came along. 
And a miscarriage, by the way, is the rejection of a child. Uh, so there is something going on emotionally about that's rejecting this child. So don't think about it intellectually. You see, a lot of problems when we describe things here, a lot of people go into it intellectually and say, oh, I, I wanted a child, I wanted a child, I wanted a child. But what did you want the child for? So you see, a lot of times a person has miscarriages because they want the child to perform a duty that they have inside of themselves as a needy duty. And the child feels totally rejected by that. The child has a job before it begins life even, right, which actually rejects the child in utero. So, so a lot of times we need to get away from the intellect and look at, all right, I know a miscarriage. So this is your mum I'm talking with now. I know a miscarriage is caused by the fact that I'm rejecting the child. Why would I be rejecting the child? Instead of judging the rejection and saying, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a mother, I wanted to be a mother and going down that track, stop just judging all that and just go, all right, what emotion is there in me about having a boy or having a girl or having either? What emotion is there that creates this rejection inside of me? And a lot of the emotions are actually needy-based emotions. Children feel very repelled by our own neediness as adults. And, and if I'm really, really needy for a child, and this is, by the way, why a lot of people who haven't, don't have children and then they go and get an adopted child and all of a sudden they have one. Can you see the relationship? Because they, the rest of the time they're needy, 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 needy for a child, needy for a child. There's something in that emotionally for them. They go out and get a child, which they then project all their neediness onto, of course, um, right, the adopted child, and then now they're not so needy for a child and one comes along. <laughs> Does that make sense? Can you see what's rejecting the process even of conception? Or, or, and with miscarriages, it's similar types of processes often. In your case, what happened is that because mum didn't want you, right, you then blamed yourself. Right? Now, what you're doing by continuing to blame yourself is not healing the emotion. You need to start allowing yourself to feel that mum didn't want you. And instead of, say, and instead of saying to yourself that it was all your fault, understand the truth, the, the divine truth. And that is, how can it be all your fault when you were only like a little child? It can't be all your fault, can it? Can you see that? But you would prefer to feel it's all your fault so that you don't have to feel the grief that mum didn't want you. Does that make sense? So you would prefer to blame yourself so that you don't have to feel the feelings you really have that mum didn't want you and the grief that's about, all about that. Does that make sense? So from God's perspective... Blame it, you blaming yourself is just helping you avoid this deeper grief. And this is something that's coming up a fair bit today. When you blame yourself, you are usually using it to avoid another deeper, more painful emotional experience. Does that make sense? And the deeper, more painful one is my, if my mum doesn't want me, if my mum didn't want me, then what? How bad is that? Like, my own mother didn't want me. There's lots of emotions about that in, inside, right? And so instead of feeling those emotions that mum didn't want me, I'm blaming myself that mum didn't want me. And that's why a lot of times we finish up having recurring emotions about the same thing. Because a lot of the times we are actually staying in this state which is helping us prevent the real emotion from mm -hmm. flowing, right? And this is where the truth is so important. If, if I start stating the truth, that all I had to do for you to cry, which was accessing some of this causal emotion, all I had to do was to state the truth, that your mum didn't want you. Can you see how powerful the truth is? Yeah. And just allow yourself to feel that truth. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And your mum, by the way, is flying a heap of justifications at to me as to why she didn't want you. So be it. Yeah. And... and with all of that, there's often a recurring sense of helplessness and hopelessness of course. within me. And I also feel there are beings around me who are sucking off that. And it's Total. like, I've absolutely fucking had enough of it. Yep. What's happening is when you blame yourself, 
They'll, you will attract lots and lots of spirits in the spirit world who want somebody to blame. Mm. And when you blame yourself, all they do is they project, yep, you're to blame, yep, you're to blame, yep, you're to blame, so that they don't have to feel any of their emotions about their own responsibility for their own life, right? Yeah. And even your mother, she's in exactly the same place, by the way. She, she would definitely feel as though you're to blame more than she's willing to face her own emotion. Right? And the reason why they do that is because they can avoid a lot in that place. Of course, they don't grow very much. and They don't grow at all while they're in that place. When you, what we need to do to stop that attraction is to deal with the fact that you're blaming yourself because you don't want to feel the grief that mum didn't want you. Does that make sense? If you choose to feel the grief that mum didn't want you, you will stop blaming yourself. When you blame yourself, that's like a self-punishment, right? Yeah. And it's going to feel pointless. Because where do you go from that? You can't release any treatment. emotion. And, and at some level, the soul always knows when a certain action is pointless. And any action where I'm blaming myself is a pointless action. Because it, it, it doesn't help me release any causal emotion. It's just the same as blame or anger or rage towards anyone else. It blocks all up my emotion. And my soul knows that. Uh, it's only when we state the truth that now this emotion can flow. Does that make sense? So let the emotion flow now that you know the truth. Right? Now your mum's got all sorts of issues to work through and she'll have to work through them, whether she works through them now, or it doesn't matter about all that. The key is to stop blaming yourself right, for something that... It, so this is not a truth. You cannot be to blame for what happened when you were a baby. Right? You can't be to blame for it. You, how, how did you have any control over what happened when you were a baby? None whatsoever. So you I was innocent. So, yes, yeah, so you can't be to blame for it. So let's state the truth. Whatever had happened to you emotionally when you were a baby can't have been your creation. Right? It has to have been somebody else's creation. And the key is to at least state the truth of that. Because while you stay in the state of self-blame, you're not stating the truth of that. You're lying to yourself. You're saying to yourself, I'm to blame, I'm to blame, I'm to blame. And it's a lie. And while you're telling yourself a lie, no causal emotion is going to flow. I was the one who was wrong. Yeah. And it's yeah. not true. It's not true, no. So, so rather than, rather than not, you know, staying in this state of now going and saying, oh, let's blame my mother instead... That doesn't help you with the causal emotion much either. I get that. Because what you need to do is feel the grief that mum didn't love you. That's the feeling you have, right, inside of you. Even whether it's true or not, it's immaterial. That's the feeling that's inside of you. That's the truth of this feeling. So you need to feel that feeling that mum didn't love you. You need to feel that. And as you release that, you will start to have some love for yourself. At the moment, what's happening is you're just hammering yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and bl when you blame yourself, that's what you're doing. Thank you. Now, that's going to attract these spirits who also want to hammer you. Sorry, say that again. These spirits will also want to blame you. So what happens when I get into a state of self-blame and I want to hit myself or whatever else, I am now going to have with me quite a lot of spirits who also want to hit me. And they're perfectly willing to use me to hit me. They're perfectly willing to use me to harm myself. Does that make sense? Because they want that to occur. So, so while I'm in this state of self-blame, I am actually enabling a whole group of spirits who are in these rages to actually ex express their rage to me. Can you see how damaging that is? It's like, it's like all of a sudden attracting 20 people around you who also are all in a rage with you. It took me a long time to realise that myself. Like I used to have like millions of spirits around me at time in a rage with me because of how much blame I had towards myself. Yeah. And I'd feel them all around me, like just, just all just, yes, I am to blame, you know, and projecting all this age and anger. And the more, the more I hurt myself or try to hurt myself, the more they, li li they like that. Yeah. As you actually started to say that I just had to put my hand on my head to hold myself here. Yeah. It was like I could feel all this energy wanting to disorientate me. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a temptation of your own too and that is to get out of body rather than feel that. 
So, you know, you, that's part of this mm. process for mm. you. You want to get away from feeling this, feeling these things. If they lose your, if you lose this process of self-blame and you don't do it anymore, they lose all their fun. Mm. I get that. And they don't want to lose their fun. They've spent years developing this fun through you. Do you understand? They've spent years mm. keeping you in this state of self-blame so that they've got someone to punish. Right? And a lot of them are women who felt really like having children was a punishment to them. So they, they just want to, like any person that has any blame, they just want to project that at them, particularly if they blame about being born. Because there, frankly, you know, there's an old saying that no, there's no love like a mother's love. To be frank with you, it's a heap of crap. <laughs> the only love there's no love like is God's love. Right? A lot of so-called mothers love on the planet is a lot to do with emotional manipulation, control, a lot to do with like feeling... Many mothers feel totally manipulated by having children. They don't want... They, they feel like their whole life constricts when they have a child. Many mothers do. Where, and many of you can relate to this, right? Where you're going along in your life, maybe starting a career or starting some things you enjoy, all of a sudden you get pregnant. Right? Whether you're married or not is immaterial, right? You get pregnant, who's got the responsibility for this child primarily now? That's what it feels like. None of the men take any responsibility, do they? How many men come along and say, I'll look after the child three days a week? <laughs> right, let's say they're not married to you, but you know, you've had a child. And, and they, what do they stay instead? Why don't you have an abortion? I'll pay for it. Many of them, how many of you have had that said to you? Like, right? So quite a lot, right? Have an abortion, I'll pay for it. And, and how many of you have ever had said to you from, your, from a male who you've not been married to, have the child and I'll look after it as much as you will? One person is there. So That's a big difference, isn't it? <laughs> right? But he didn't. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the truth is actually that often we've got so much emotion as parents that we don't realise we're re really projecting at our children. Many of us felt very disappointed about the accident pregnancies that have happened in our lives, haven't we? Male or female. Many, many of us do get this feeling of, oh, we're just starting to get things together financially and there's another one. Or we're just starting to get, you know, just got the last two off the school <laughs> and there's another one. And, you know, there's all these, and all of these emotions just get dumped on our children. Right? So while we might have had a good upbringing, as far as we know, we weren't tortured and raped and abused, quite often we have all of these other types of emotions that have been projected at us through our life at some point. Or often we have the opposite emotions from our parents. That, you know, they've, they've got a job for us ready before we're even conceived. Right? Now that's a lot of burden and baggage and oppression on us as well. Yeah. What's the time, by the way? No worries. Jenny, thanks. Um, I've reached an emotion of no sense of self. Um... It's manifested in a physical toothache, gone to the doctor, pills for antibiotics, and um, gone to the dentist. Dentist says, no, um, it's an infection in your mouth. It's not an infection in the tooth. Mm -hmm. Trace it back to being in my mother's womb and she got kicked by a horse and I can feel the imprint of the horse through her stomach here on the side of my face. Mm -hmm. Take that down deeper and I have... <sighs> this is hard. <laughs> no sense of self. Can you tell me please how, how do you release... How do you find self-esteem, a sense of self? Like it's really wonderful to want to have desires and 
want to keep feeling and want to stay alive, mm-hmm. want to find love and understand love. But I've, I've hit a place where I want to stop. I want to get off the path because it's too hard. Yep. I have no sense of self. I have no sense of self-esteem. And I'd like to ask you to please trigger me somehow. <laughs> I mean it. So have I got a job then? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> you just gave me to, one. To do... Can I, can I just, instead of being facetious about it though, let's uh, talk about the emotion, shall we? So the emotion is that you have no self, sense of self. There's just nothing there. I don't, it's like a void. It's a profound, it must be an emotion because it's, but it's empty. Yeah, well, no, no, that's the, that's the rage of the emotion that you're talking about now. Let's go back to the emotion itself. Can we keep it really simple, AJ? Sure. So that I can get it? Right, so I'm nothing. So the question is for you, who am I? Who am I, isn't it? Basically, I don't know who I am. Yeah. Right, so in other words, I don't don't have a sense of identity. Yeah. That's the emotion. So so that, that actually comes from this... I'm nothing, basically, emotion, right? That I, I am nothing. I've got nothing to know. How, how do I now discover myself? So what would you do if you were starting blank and you had to discover yourself, Jim? What would you start, what would you do? You're starting from nothing and you have to discover yourself. What would you do? I don't have an answer. I don't know. Okay. What, what I had to do myself, because I've been in the same place, right, is I had to firstly feel that I am nothing, that I, that I don't have any identity. I got that. Right? So feel the grief of that. I've got and what that. I then did is I started talking to God, so really discuss this matter with God. I started talking to God, can you show me who I am? But I don't have that. I don't have that he's there. I don't have that God's there emotionally. So it's going to be very difficult to... There's, to no, there's nothing there. Yeah, I don't agree with that, Jen. You've received some divine love, so there's some love yes. in your soul, right? And you know you've already made lots of changes in your life, so there is already some love in your soul and you know you've received in it. In this emotion, there's, there's no, he's not there. When I'm feeling nothing, he's not there. I when you say you're feeling nothing, the feeling I get from you is that you're not feeling as if you're nothing. You're actually feeling nothing. In other words, in a, one's a state of grief and the other place is a state of complete lockdown. Do you understand the difference between the two states? You, so the state of grief is, I'd be crying my guts out about I'm nothing. Like, so I'd be grieving the fact that I'm nothing. I'd be grieving the fact that I don't even know who I am. I've got no idea of who I am. How, do, how am I ever going to discover it? Like, that, that was, that's the grief of the emotion. The feeling that I'm not feeling anything about this emotion, I'm just feeling nothing, blank, is not actually feeling it. Does that make sense? There's a difference between those two states. Does everyone get what I'm saying there? There's a difference between the state of feeling that you're having an emotion pass through you that you're nothing, and if we can turn off mobiles, that would be great, and, it, and having a feeling like of, uh, and not, sorry, not feeling anything at all regarding yourself. In other words, I don't feel, I feel nothing, and I, that means I also feel and emotionally feel nothing, right? which is the place you're in at the moment. Agreed? So, what's happening then is there must be a blockage. So let's just 
So that's the emotion I need to feel. I'm nothing. I don't know who I am. Right, that's my emotion. No, don't know who I am. And under, above that, there must be some kind of blocking thing. Because if I wasn't blocked, I would actually be grieving this emotion. Does that make sense to you? I just feel numb. Yes. So where am I at? Am you, I at you are the here. block? You are numb. Right? You're not feeling anything. Right? You're feeling numb. So when you say to me, I feel like I don't know who I am, I feel I'm nothing, you're not actually feeling you're nothing and you're not actually feeling that you don't know who you are. You're feeling numb. The feeling that you actually have right now is numb. In other words, not feeling at all. Numb. That's the feeling you actually have. That's telling you that you're blocked to feeling this feeling. Does that make sense to you? I'm blocked to feel. Now, why would I be blocked to feeling this feeling? There's only one reason, and that is... It's a shocking feeling. You're afraid of feeling it. So my suggestion is to pray to God about why am I so afraid to feel this feeling? But I can't feel he's there. Okay, so don't feel he's there. And that's part of why you're so afraid, by the way. Can you see that? I can't feel that anybody's there. That's right. That's why you're so afraid. You don't want to feel this feeling because you want somebody to be there while you're feeling it. Does that make sense? You want God to be there while you're feeling it. You want Graham to be there while you're feeling it. No. You're, right? You want somebody to be there. No. You say that, but you mustn't. Because no. you're afraid. No. No what? No, I don't want people there. Don't want Graham. Or, uh, or anybody else. And now I feel you're denying. No, you. it's true, AJ. <laughs> I don't want people there. Well, all I can do is this tell is you what I feel. This is terrifying. It's terrifying. And yes. I'm afraid of the people as well. No, you're afraid of being alone, girl. Like, you're afraid that nobody's going to notice you going through this feeling. Because you're nothing. Right. What, what you're doing is you're in numb because you, you're, you're terrified. You remember what happens to an animal when it's terrified. What does it do? Right. If you, I don't know if many of you went out shooting with your parents while you were young, <laughs> but I did. Uh, that was one of my fortunate experiences. And, uh, and in the process, what my father used to do sometimes, when we, 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 he'd go out shooting rabbits, and what, what he would do is he'd shoot over the top of the rabbit's head. And what would happen is the rabbit would just go into terror because the sound barrier being cracked by the bullet would just go s straight through the rabbit in terms of its, its emotional state and it would just sit there and shiver. And you could actually go up and what my father used to do is go up and pick up the rabbit and slit its throat. Right? But, he, but the rabbit wouldn't do it, run away because it was so terrified. It was just in this state of total, total numbness to all thing around it at that, in that place because of the terror. You are terrified, Jen. Does that make sense? And again, me saying the truth causes an emotional response in you. Remember, every time I state the truth about an emotion, an emotion will flow. You're now not numb anymore, are you? No. You're terrified. Right? Just stating the truth of where I am causes the emotion to flow. And this is the point that I'm trying to get at with this relationship between tr emotions and truth. Up until this point, you were saying, I'm numb and I can't get anywhere. Da, da, da. Not true. Not true. You are terrified. That's the truth. You're terrified. And because you're terrified, you, and you don't want to even feel how terrified you are, you go numb instead. Right? It's a choice to go numb so that you don't have to feel terrified. So my suggestion is feel terrified now. Let yourself go through the, t the feeling of being terrified. That's the block to feeling these emotions. You don't need to know anything more than that at this point. When you let yourself go through the terrified emotion, 
you'll find why you were so terrified about the emotion that's underneath. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good on you, Dan. Down to the processing rooms. It's great having the processing rooms, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's three o'clock, so what, what I want to do after the break is I want to now demonstrate the relationship between, uh, we've demonstrated I think enough of the relationship between emotions and truth, right? And remember, what, I've, so what I was again illustrating there with Jen is you just have to say the truth even to somebody. And if it's the truth that they are dying within themselves emotionally, if it's the truth, they will actually immediately get into the emotion. It's very rare for them not to do that. So unless they're really blocked down completely in total intellectual denial, they will always get to the emotion. Now, the second part of what I wanted to talk about is this process of acting or action. Because what I find a lot of people doing is they say, oh, AJ, I can't get into my emotion. And I say to them, well, do you know what it's about? Yes, it's about my whatever. Let's say it's about my grief about my mother never, never loving me. And I ask, is your mother still alive? Yes, my mother's still alive. Have you told her that she's never loved you? No. Why not? Oh, because it would devastate her. There's my block. You see, a lot of times, and this is what I want to illustrate after the point, if we act, if we act, we will not only expose the underlying causal emotion, but we will also expose all of our blockages to feeling that emotion. <laughs> and that's what I want to discuss after the break. All right? So have a good brunch.